Hello everybody, welcome to part 3 in a series on using Sugarbytes Obscurium inside your DAW. My name's Tom Cosm and we're going to be focusing on making a snare and a hi-hat today. So in the first video we made this ARP effects kind of sound. Nice little intro sound and then the last video we made a kick drum using FM synthesis which was a lot of fun and we're going to be using FM synthesis a bit today for the snare as well. So I'm just going to go right ahead and create a new MIDI track. I'm going to name this to hat and snare and as usual I'm going to copy this MIDI clip across down to the um, new track because this just has one long continuous note in it and we're just using continuous notes because Obscurium is handling all the rhythmical stuff and all the melodic stuff. So once that's done, I'm just going to simply double click Obscurium and here's our brand new Obscurium in that hat and snare track. Let's solo and have a listen. So of course it's the default patch. I'm going to go into the preset manager, go to user and choose the init patch because I like working with this patch. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is bring the loop markers back. So they're just playing two beats. Um, we just used one beat when we worked with the kick because we only needed one sixteenth note at the start of every beat. Doof, doof, doof. But this one we need a doof, ksh, doof, ksh. So we need to have two beats so we can work with the snare, which is going to go here. So let's just listen again. So start with the hi hats. Hi hats, synthesized hi hats, a lot of noise. So we're going to be using the noise parameter a lot. Um, it's already up quite high, so I'm not going to touch that for now, but we also have a lot of musical uh, synthesized um, stuff happening here. So the quickest way to kind of get rid of that would be to go to the pitch tab and bring the octave dial down to negative 24. I'm also going to go into the pitch parameter, and bring the pitch down to zero, bring the up down to zero as well. So now we have a lot of noise and a very low bassy subby sound. And we can eradicate that subby sound by going into the filter type and choosing high pass because a high pass filter remember only lets through high frequencies. So let's actually bring that up to the top and play. So now we're just getting the really really high frequencies through. But it's just sounding like continuous white noise so I'm going to go into my amp envelope area where my envelopes are, bring my crossfader up to up envelope which means that this envelope is going to be applied to the volume of the sound every time one of these motion trigger buttons is enabled, which they all are. So that means we can play with the release part of the envelope and get shorter notes. Now it, it would be cool to be able to change the length of this release over the sequence so I'm going to attach it to the mod by clicking the mod button here. Then going into our mod parameter, bring all the mod values down, very short, and let's just open up the offbeats. Very good. Now to get a little bit of variation, just a little bit of kind of human feeling to this, first thing I'm going to do is go into my clock tab, give it a bit of swing. Kind of offsets the second and fourth uh, sixteenth note, so we get a bit of a swing happening or groove if you like, and I'm going to go into my type, this is where we choose between low pass, band pass, high pass or anything in between, and I'm going to just kind of draw a little sequence that repeats itself twice. It doesn't have to be exact, in fact the less exact it is the better because this is kind of the humanizing of the sound and by kind of randomly plucking things it sounds like someone's actually playing a hi-hat rather than a computer sequencer doing ch -ch 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 -ch. Maybe bring these up a little bit. And we can also go into our cutoff and do the same thing here. Now I'm just picking at random. These videos are all about me mucking about and trying stuff new, so bear with me. Very good. Now we still have some, I guess you could say, harmonic frequencies left over from that very low synthesizer note. You can see it playing two notes down here, so I might actually go into my poly and bring that down. So it's just playing one. Very good. Now let's go into, what are we doing, the sound tab. Uh, yeah, we're using FM, so I'm going to go into, uh, before I go into my sound tab, I'm going to go to my mix parameter. Remember, we can mix between analog and FM oscillator, so I'm going to bring the FM amount all the way up. So we just have the FM oscillator playing. Still sounds a bit strange, so let's go into the sound tab. Let's play with some routings. At the moment, it's on this one. Let's try this routing. Mm, not really. Try this one. Okay, that sounds a lot better. And it's quite quiet now because I've done all that filtering stuff, so I'm going to bring the master volume up quite high. Okay, let's talk about the snare. This is going to be fun. Snares are a bit tricky sometimes, so if I do uh, not get it right the first time, bear with me. Um, 
So with the snare, we want a bit more body. It's like a kick drum, you know. We want to have some kind of body to it, some mid sound to it, right? We don't want to like the kick, kick drum we don't want to have subs and stuff so let's go ahead and let's go filter type and let's make the filter type a band pass on this note here remember this is the first sixteenth note of the second beat where the snare goes maybe down a bit more so you can hear that just that particular hit has a little bit of body to it let's go into the mods tab and make that note a bit longer Not bad. What if we we change the filter type to a kind of a band pass? What if we give the cutoff? What if we bring the cutoff down? Let's see how that goes. Not too much. And we could also give the cutoff some envelope. So remember, if I click on this um, area here, we get four extra options: envelope, LFO, min, and max. And we can assign the envelope in the mods tab, which is here, to this cutoff. And we can bring up how much envelope we want. So. We can shorten this a bit. It's not going to affect it too much at the moment. If we go into the noise tab, let's bring the noise up to its maximum value for that snare. Not bad. What if we go into the pitch? Because, I mean, as I said, snares are similar to kicks in that they have a high frequency at the start and then they, they kind of go lower over a very short amount of time. So if we go into the pitch tab, and maybe give some envelope to the pitch as well. And we could also bring the pitch value up here to try and find, uh, it's probably too high, but we can see if we can get a bit more body to it. Sounding all right, let's give it a tiny bit of reverb. Make it a short reverb. So obviously I'm not going to be able to create a real good rim shot or something like a real snare drum would have, but we're working with electronic music here and I think that's sounding starting to shape pretty well. Let's listen with the kick very quick. Not bad. So the things we haven't touched on yet are the FMX, FM1 and FM2. Um, these could be handy or they could change it in a bad way, but let's play with it anyway. So I'm just going to go into my FMX value and let's bring it down for the uh, snare hit. It's kind of sounding a bit more like it's got a bit more body to it. And of course we can apply that envelope to the FMX as well. We can also bring the min and max down and, and muck around with these ourselves to kind of shape it. It's quite a poppy snare actually isn't it? It's, I kind of like it. Reminds me of somebody playing uh, squash. Um, let's go into the FM1 and see how this changes the sound. FM synthesis can be quite difficult to predict what the end result's going to sound like because the mathematics behind it gets so complicated. So I find trial and error is the best for this. I, I mean, I wish I could explain it to you in more depth, but I'm not actually that good. But we're having fun, right? So let's have a go. Let's try adding the envelope to the FM1 as well. Bring the max down. What if we attach the envelope uh, release here in the mod section to the mod parameter as well? Not much difference there. Maybe bring the pitch down a little bit. Bring the cutoff down a bit more. and then bring the mods back a bit. Let's just go back into the sound tab and bring the ratio up. Who knows, it could be cool. Let's turn off the harmonic button. So that means that uh, the ratio is no longer mathematically uh, kind of bound to the original frequency. I think I'm liking that. I'm just going to play with the filter type a little bit. And maybe if we give it a bit of resonance. Remember, resonance kind of amplifies the volume at which the cutoff frequency is. So it kind of really gives it a bit of an accent, if you like. So this could help. 
Maybe not, just a little bit. Okay, one thing I'm going to do here, which I haven't done in the other videos, is I'm just going to close this down and I'm going to duplicate this track. Um, I'm going to solo this one and I'm just going to keep this one here because I'm kind of happy how this is, but I want to start getting into um, kind of the, the modifier kind of stuff and just, you know, it's quite random and experimental, so I'm duplicating it to play with an experimental version just in case I want to roll back and go to the original here. So let's open that up and go into our modifiers. So the modifiers, remember, give us a whole selection of tools which we can quite drastically change all the values and all the parameters in one go. Um, it's quite, I find it quite good for percussive sounds. You can kind of shape everything um, in one kind of swift movement. So by clicking on the modifiers button, it, it, it will repeat the current 16th note or the current step that you're playing. So at the moment we're just playing a hi-hats, but if I click over on our snare, it's going to keep playing it for us. And I'm going to use these three tools here, which are quite cool. This one moves all the all the parameters around at once. You see it kind of cycles through everything and moves them all around. You can see them moving here, the colors, the bars are moving. That was an interesting high pitch thing. So if we wanted a high pitch kind of kick, we could use that. Oh, sorry, a snare, but I don't want that. We can also kind of swap everything around. So this one stretches everything out. Oh no, sorry, this one stretches everything out. And this one actually swaps them around with each other. That's interesting. Let's listen to that with the kick. Put it back on draw tools so it cycles through the sequence. Let's listen to it. Let's listen to both of them at the same time. I'm quite happy with that. So that's actually both of the two hi-hats things that uh, we created, the hi-hat snare obscurium patches. The original one, which uh, I backed up because I wanted to move over to this one and experiment with the modifiers, but together I actually like how they sound. So very good, I'm gonna leave this video there and what I'll do is I'll just group these together into in Ableton Live into a group track and we'll call this percussion. So those two are playing together and uh, yeah, I guess that'll conclude the video here. Um, next video, I'm going to be making a bass patch, and that's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you tune in. Uh, my name's Tom Cosm, and enjoy.